Okay, everyone. Now we're going to take a look at problem 33B. It's on page 120 to 121. It starts off, following is the unadjusted trial balance. So that's where we ended the end of chapter two, remember. We took all of our transactions throughout the time period, made journal entries, posted those journal entries to the accounts in the general ledger, and created our first trial balance, the unadjusted trial balance. So that's where this company stands right now. The Institute provides one-on-one -on -one training, individuals who pay tuition directly to the business and offer extension training to groups in off-site locations. Shown after the trial balance are items A through H that require adjusting entries as of December 31st. So the very first requirement is for us to prepare T accounts with balances from the unadjusted trial balance. So all we're doing is creating a T account, remember, and putting the balance of the account on the proper side. So really, we're going backwards because this trial balance would have been created from the ledger and with its balances. So we have 60,000 on the debit, accounts receivable starts at zero, Unadjusted balance of teaching supplies is 70. Same with prepaid insurance, it's at 19,000. Prepaid rent is at 3,800 and professional libraries at 12,000. The accumulated depreciation account has a credit balance in it of 2,500. The equipment for 40,000 on the debit side, accumulated depreciation on the equipment has a balance from the unadjusted trial balance of 20,000. Continuing, accounts payable has a balance of 11,200 on the credit. There is no balance in the salaries payable, but since it's listed, we should create a T account. Unearned training fees has a credit balance of 28,600. Capital has a credit balance of 71,500 and withdrawals has a balance of 20,000 on the debit side. The rest of the T accounts, Tuition fees earned has a credit balance of 129,200. Training fees earned has a credit balance of 68,000. The depreciation expense professional library and depreciation expense equipment have zero balances, so that's where they start. Don't worry about the additional amounts here. For now, just where they start. Salaries expense has an unadjusted balance of 44,200. Insurance expense has zero. Then we have rent expense has a unadjusted balance of 29,600. Teaching supplies expense has a zero balance. The advertising expense has a debit balance of 19,000 and utilities expense a debit of 13,400. Okay, so that is where our general ledger stands before any adjusting journal entries. Now, R2 says, now prepare any adjusting journal entries that result from the information in items A through, um, I'm sorry, A through H. In A, sorry about that. An analysis of the Institute's insurance policy shows that 9,500 of the coverage has expired. So what that is saying is currently, so step one, what is in prepaid insurance? 19,000. 9,500 of it has happened. It's occurred. So $9,500 of that prepaid insurance should be recognized an, as an expense. The insurance expense would be debited 9,500, prepaid insurance credited 9,500. Now, you could immediately post this first adjusting journal entry to the affected accounts 
in your already established general ledger. There it is. Insurance expense debit 9500. Prepaid insurance credit 9500. Now you've adjusted the balance so that prepaid insurance is properly reported at what is still owed to this company, Alonzo Institute of Insurance Coverage, and you've properly expensed the part that is now insurance expense. In B, an inventory account shows that teaching supplies costing $20,000 are available at year end. Well, if we go back up to our asset T account teaching supplies, it says there's $70. So step one, where it's at, Step two, where it, where it should be at, right? We used up $50,000 of those. So the journal entry that results is a debit to teaching supplies expense and a credit to the teaching supply asset account. And you saw, well, there right in front of you, here's the expense account, properly expensing the portion of the teaching supplies that have been used up and I apologize for my scrolling, but credit to insurance, or I'm sorry, credit to teaching supplies. C, annual depreciation on the equipment is $5,000. So this company calculated the amount of the equipment they used up and we just need to make the journal entry, debit depreciation expense equipment, credit the accumulated depreciation equipment account, because we don't credit the equipment account directly. Slowly, I'm going to scroll. I'm starting to get dizzy. Here is our debit to depreciation expense in the expense area and our credit to accumulated depreciation equipment, the contra asset. In part D, annual depreciation on the professional library is 2,400. So again, oops, let's just focus on D. Depreciation expense, professional library is debited. Accumulated depreciation, professional library is credited for the amount that we're expensing. So there is the debit to depreciation expense, professional library in the T account. And then we credit the accumulated depreciation professional library account in the, the contra asset. In E, on November 1st, the Institute agreed to do a special two month course for a client. The contract calls for a 14,300 monthly fee and the client paid the two month fee in advance when the cash was received, the unearned training account fees account was credited. Let me just, sorry, I'm kind of communicating here. I'm texting, sorry. Okay, so let's take a look. Unearned training fees was credited the day we received the money. Well, two months has passed. Those two months of training are complete. So that means all of it has become revenue by December 31st. So we're going to debit the liability account, unearned training fees for the full amount because all of it is earned and credit the revenue training fees earned. So there it is posted. There's your credit to training fees earned. And we saw up here when we were looking at the account, there's your debit to the liability unearned trading fees. Now it has a zero balance in it. Yeah, we don't owe anymore. We did all that service. The day we got the money, we couldn't call it revenue. But by the end of December, we've, we've completed it all. On October 15th, the Institute agreed to teach a four-month class beginning immediately. 
to an executive with payment due at the end of the class. At December 31st, 5750 of the tuition has been earned by the Institute. So now this scenario, no money has been received yet. It doesn't say anything about them even recording anything related to this. So this is an accrued revenue. We've got to record the 5750 in revenue as tuition fees earned. Since we didn't get any money yet, we debit accounts receivable. Oof, sorry, <laughs> went a little crazy there. Oh gosh, I'm way off, 3, 4B. Sorry about that. Close your eyes while I scroll, right? I usually copy and paste just this answer <laughs> and I didn't this time, right? Oh no, I'm sorry, 3-3-B, three, three right? There we go. There's our journal entries. So there's the credit to train, oh no, that's not the one we want, to tuition fees earned and our debit to accounts receivable. So you see, we go right back to that general ledger we've already had in place, update it. In G, the Institute's only employees paid weekly as of the end of the year, three day salaries have accrued at the rate of $150 per day. So that means that employee worked three days before the end of the year. So that amount is owed to the employee. We would then debit salary expense and credit salaries payable to show hey, there was $450 of additional expense that has not been recorded yet because this employee worked and we owe it to them. So I'm taking my time this time. Their salary expense increasing and up here our liability somewhere, salaries payable increasing as well on the credit side. The final journal entry, the balance in the prepaid account represents rent for December. Oh, okay. So prepaid rent has a balance of 3,800. Well, that was for the rent for December. Well, then all of it should be an expense. So we'll make our journal entry, debit rent expense and credit prepaid rent. Remove all of it out of the asset. It's not owed to us anymore at Alfonso's, Alonzo's. When we do that now, our rent expense increases on the debit side, 3,800, and our prepaid rent decreases on the credit side. Now we've completed all of our adjusting entries, and we've posted each one to the general ledger T account it affected. So now any account that needs an updated balance will do that. So accounts receivable now has an adjusted balance of 5750. Cash balance didn't change, so it's still at 60. Teaching supplies, that went up to in, for $20,000. I'm sorry, it went down to 20,000. Prepaid insurance decreased to 9500. Prepaid rent is zero. Our professional library still has a balance of 12 grand. Our accumulated depreciation though has increased 2,400 now to 4,900. Equipment still has the same balance of 40,000, but the accumulated depreciation increased to 25,000 due to these additional journal entries. Accounts payable still has a balance. It was unaffected during this process, but salaries payable, look at that. It now has a balance of $450. Training, unearned training fees is zero. Capital and withdrawals, their balances did not change. Here, look at this. Tuition fees earned. It increased. Now it's up to 134,950. Training fees earned. That increased up to 96,600. If we never made these E journal entry or F journal entry, we would have not reported 30, almost 34,000 in revenue. Wow. On the expense side, now depreciation expense has a balance for both. Didn't before. Salaries expense increased to 44650. 
Before we didn't have any insurance expense reported, now it's at 9,500. Rent expenses now at 33,400. And teaching supplies, didn't have anything in there. Teaching supplies expense, now at 50,000. Our other last two expenses did not change. Once we determine new balances in each account, we then create our second trial balance called the adjusting, adjusted trial balance. I'm going to get rid of my ribbon here so we can see the whole thing. This is a list of each account in the general ledger we just looked at with their current balance. Assets first, then liabilities, then the parts of equity. Note, we add up our debit column and our credit column. So double check your numbers and make sure they agree. You could see, wow, we got everything on there now. Now we can make financial statements because we have good numbers. And that's your final step. Prepare the company's income statement, statement of owner's equity, and its balance sheet at December 31st. And they tell us Alonzo's capital account balance was 71500 of December 31st of the prior year. Ooh. So that means the balance in his account, that's where he started the current year at. So just like before, all the revenues, but now from our adjusted trial balance, are used on our income statement. Don't forget your heading. All the expenses are listed. And there's, it's expanded. Look, at now we have depreciation expense in there and teaching supplies expenses. Add up your revenues, add up your expenses, net the two together. If the result is positive, it's net income. And that's what we have here. Statement of owner's equity. They told us that they started off the year at 71,500 in his capital account. So there were no contributions made by Alonzo during the year. But his owner's equity did increase for that 54,200 in net income and it decreased for the balance in the withdrawals account, 20 grand. So the capital balance of Alonzo at December 31st is 105,700. So make sure you have this adjusted trial balance correct and you are able to make these financial statements correctly. The final financial statement you're responsible for is the balance sheet. Now, this balance sheet is in a report format. It's just assets come first, then liabilities underneath, and then equity underneath that. It's just another way to format the, the uh, balance sheet. Still doesn't change, assets are first. Cash, whatever's on that adjusted trial balance will come down as cash, same with accounts receivable and teaching supplies and prepaid insurance. Now, when you list your professional library, subtract the balance of accumulated depreciation and the book value is recorded. Equipment. Recorded at its, it's reported at its cost, the balance in the equipment account, and then you decrease it for the amount in accumulated depreciation, and the book value is reported, the net amount. Add up all those amounts, and total assets are 117,350. The company only has two liabilities with balances, so we'll list those and total them, accounts payable and salaries payable. The equity was determined on the statement of owner's equity. So we'll just transfer the 105,700 down into the equity area, add the liabilities of 11,650 to the equity. Liabilities and equity equal total assets. So we're still doing the reports the same way. We're still doing the process the same way. It's just we made journal entries for a different reason during this chapter. So again, all the information on these financial statements came from right there.
So please, if you didn't go through this problem, do it. Take it step by step. Open those T accounts. Make your adjusting journal entries. Post your adjusting journal entries. Make the adjusted trial balance and the financial statements. Any questions you may have, please post to the discussion board.